Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be going over new makeup launches and discussing whether or not I plan to purchase in the segment I call Love It or Leave It. Now I don't know if it's because we've already seen a sneak peek of Chanel Holiday, but there's not a lot coming out at the moment that really excites me. I just haven't been in a makeup shopping mood lately, which happens, you know, ebbs and flows. I feel like I purchased so much over the past couple of months that I haven't even touched, so part of me wants to enjoy what I already have and wait for holiday. That's not to say I'm not going to buy any makeup until the holidays, but they're coming faster than you might think. I know the Chanel holiday collection is supposed to launch sometime in October. It's the end of August, but really it's basically September already, so it's going to be here before we know it, and the holidays truly is the best time for makeup. Every brand comes out with their best products. It's the prettiest packaging, so I don't know. We'll see. I always like to keep an open mind, but I also like to hear from you guys and hear what you're interested in, so be sure to let me know your thoughts down below. The first item we have to discuss are the limited edition Chanel blushes. They have sold out so quickly. The last time I checked, there was one shade available, Rose Bronze but I was so wrong about these blushes. I know I talked about them in a couple different videos, but I held off. I said I was not planning to purchase because I would have plenty of time to decide. That was not the case. When they said limited edition, this time they meant it. And it's kind of crazy because they have pieces on Chanel.com that have been there for months and months and months and months and months that are also limited edition. But these blushes, they truly sold through them. So the Rouge Profond, gone. Alizane, gone. Your best bet is to call around the Chanel Beauty Boutiques. I think there are only six in the country, so you don't have a ton of options. But I would check the boutique, see if they have any in store. They can ship them out to you. Because if you're not really interested in Rose Bronze, if you were looking to pick up one of the other shades, you may unfortunately be out of luck. And this is nuts. I really wasn't that interested simply because I have so many Chanel blushes. I didn't want to be repetitive and just pick up blushes just because the Burgundy CC, but now they're pretty much gone and I'm thinking maybe I should have picked up something. I know I mentioned the Chanel Holiday Collection. I plan to purchase the Shimmering Blush, all four of the mono shadows, and two of the lipsticks probably. I haven't decided which ones to get but I'm going to pick up the majority of this collection as soon as it becomes available. I think it looks really stunning. I enjoy the mono shadows, the singles. I think they're great quality. This is a love it for me, not a leave it. I may even end up picking up every single piece from this collection, it is that beautiful. I'd probably skip the nail polish if I had to skip something. Now here's a question. Has anybody heard anything about Dior Fall? I haven't seen any photos, no sneak peeks. I haven't heard anything about it. I feel like they've kind of gone MIA. They launched their Summer Games collection, which was probably not as long as it feels. They recently updated all of their eyeshadows, which is great. So they launched all of the new quints. Those are available. I saw a couple shades were already sold out, but I found them on the Nordstrom website. That's really exciting. I mean, it's always nice whenever they upgrade an inline product. I'm interested, but I'm waiting to see them in person. I want to see them in store, see what all of the colors look like, compare and contrast, and then decide. I feel like there's no rush. They're always going to be around. Something I'm ready to purchase is the Miss Dior Shimmering Body Powder, which I've seen a photo on their website, but there was no product page. So I don't know how to purchase. Maybe it's not available just yet, but as soon as that becomes available, that is something that I will pick up. The Chantecaille Fall Collection is here and it looks stunning. What you would expect from Chantecaille, this eyeshadow palette is really beautiful. Three metallic shades, very wearable, neutral colors. Three nude lipsticks, they all look really pretty. This is going to be a leave it for me simply because I have some eyeshadow palettes like the Natasha Denona Bronze palette I've used a handful of times, maybe two or three times at this point. As beautiful as they are, I don't think these three shades bring anything new, anything special to my personal makeup collection. The outside of the palette is gorgeous. Of course, they give back to charity. And lipsticks, I'm trying to limit the amount of lipsticks I purchase. I have so many nude lipsticks. And that is probably the one piece from the collection that I'm thinking, well, should I get it? Should I not get it? 
Chantikai is so close to my heart, I would love to pick up everything from every collection, but of course that's not really realistic and they always do beautiful things during the holidays. So I'm holding out. These colors are so pretty and if you don't have a huge makeup collection, you could probably still justify adding these pieces to your collection because they're great wearable everyday colors. I just have to skip it this time. This is one of the few lipsticks I will make an exception for. Well, I will try to make an exception. It's the collaboration between Supreme and Pat McGrath Labs. When I initially received the email so you could sign up for the waitlist, I was really kind of confused. I wasn't sure. I was torn. I wasn't sure if I really loved it or I thought it was weird. And I still think it's a little bit strange, but I'm attracted to it nonetheless. I believe it's supposed to be matte formula. I hate matte lipsticks. I will still try to purchase this. It's going to sell out so quickly. I just know this is going to be such a popular item. I don't know why, I don't know how, but I've been sucked into the Pat McGrath machine because she really is a machine. I mean, she cranks out these products in limited quantities. She drums up so much buzz. People go crazy for them and they're waking up and setting their alarms at specific times, just dying to purchase these products. I think this is going to be the same way. I even purchased the Rose Decadence palette I haven't even really touched it. I didn't do a review. I think it's probably too late, but I keep purchasing all of these products she comes up with because she does a great job. I mean, her marketing team is incredible, but this lipstick does look really nice. Next up, we have the Natasha Denona Chromium Liquid Eyeshadows. These launched, I think, a little over a week ago. I know they're available at Sephora. It looks like five different shades. The swatches are beautiful. They are stunning. But this is an easy skip for me. I'm going to leave it. I saw this and I thought, wow, that is so pretty, but that looks exactly like the type of product that I will purchase, kind of spur of the moment, you know, more of an impulse purchase, but then I'll never use it, maybe a handful of times. And I wanted to love these shades so much because it's such a cool concept. I love how they have the shift and they're kind of duochrome, really sparkly. I think she's just missing that one wow shade that have to have it, you cannot skip it. It's unlike anything else you've ever seen type of shade. If that were the case, then I probably would have purchased and maybe I would have been excited and purchased a couple. Here's a collection I'm really interested in. This picture is from Mary Tushik's Instagram page. I will link her page and any of the pages I use for reference down in the description box. But this is the Clé de Peau Holiday Collection. This illuminating powder is speaking to me. The compact looks stunning. These powders are very pretty and it is something that they always offer, but it looks like this may be a limited edition packaging, maybe a limited shade. The eyeshadow palette looks really pretty. I don't know what it is about these colors, but I think they're gorgeous. The entire color story, everything is very whimsical. It's very romantic. The lipsticks look really beautiful, but what stands out to me most is the illuminating powder and the palette. The lipsticks are nice as well. I don't know. I just love everything about it. And their new foundation is available. I saw it on their website. The Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte with SPF 20. Looks like two shades are sold out. I think this sounds really interesting. There are a couple foundations that I have my eye on, but I may have to pick this up just to see. It retails for $130, which is very pricey for a foundation. But it's not that bad for a clay de peau foundation when you compare it to the foundation, which retails for $250. So if it has skincare, which I imagine it does, it's not terrible. It's right on par with, I guess, the Tom Ford foundation. And it sounds like it has that soft matte finish, but it's still kind of radiant, creamy, dreamy. I need to try it. Speaking of foundation, the new NARS Soft Matte Foundation was sent over complimentary in a little PR gift. So I am testing that out. I tried it for the very first time yesterday. My lips are sealed until my review, which will probably come out sometime over the weekend, but it's launching at Sephora on September 1st. So I'm gonna try to get it out as quickly as possible. I will be reviewing that. And they have a new collection as well, which they sent over. They're expanding the Climax collection. They sent over an eyeshadow palette and there's a new mascara. I'm always open to trying new mascaras. It's called the Climax Extreme. The Climax Extreme eyeshadow palette is limited edition, 12 shades, matte, shimmers, and metallics. It retails for $59. And then the Climax Extreme mascara is going to retail for $24. 
This is supposed to give you dramatic volume. It's loaded with pigment. It looks really nice, so I will be testing that out soon as well. This collection will be available on August 30th. And then Chanel is launching their new Le Beige foundation sometime in September. I will absolutely pick it up to test. It's going to be very different. They reformulated their old Le Beige foundation, which was a matte finish. This is supposed to be radiant, so you're not going to be able to truly compare and contrast the two. It's a totally different foundation. And they really did need to make this change because and there wasn't really a place for the Old Bay Beige Foundation anymore. Once they brought out Ultra Latint, Ultra Latint Velvet, Vida Lumiere Aqua, there just wasn't really a place for this foundation. It was almost redundant with the Ultra Latint. They needed a hydrating, radiant foundation like this. The only one they really have is Sublimage, which is a really high price point, and Vida Lumiere, which has about five shades, and they're all gold. <laughs> this was really necessary. It's going to be available in 35 shades, which I want to say is the widest shade range of any Chanel foundation. So I think this is going to be a huge upgrade. I'm looking forward to testing this out. Here are a couple fall collections that I'm not really interested in, but I want to hear from you guys. So let me know what you think. The first is the Givenchy fall collection. It looks really pretty, but nothing that I have to have. I'm not overly wowed. The marble lipsticks look really cool. I don't know, I think I would find it really interesting and ooh and all, and then it would sit on my vanity and I really wouldn't touch it because the shades are a little bit too deep for me right now. The eyeshadow palette looks really pretty, I like these colors. I don't have a lot of experience with Givenchy eyeshadows, but I don't remember hearing a lot of good things. So I think they're probably nice, not amazing. There's too much amazing makeup out there to waste your dollars on mediocre makeup. So I'm gonna save my money on this one even though it does look really pretty. Another one is the YSL Fall Collection and this photo comes from Chic Profile Official. Again, all of these pages will be linked down below. This looks really fun. I love the leopard print. I love the limited edition packaging. But there's nothing, again, that stands out that I have to have. The eyeshadow palette looks really nice, but I'm kind of set with my one clutch eyeshadow palette. I don't feel like I need to collect them all. I was very happy with it. I love the colors. I love the quality. I imagine these shadows perform just as nice. The lipsticks look really pretty. <sighs> you know... It's so tough when you're allocating funds because of course I'd love to try everything and review everything, but you have to make those tough choices sometimes. And this overall is a, a skip, I'm gonna leave it because I can't even find one thing that I'm like, yes, I will be so excited, so happy to add that to my makeup collection. I don't use the Touche Claw, I don't use a sponge foundation. Lipsticks are a no-go for me unless there's something really spectacular and I have a bunch of limited edition lipsticks from YSL So I know they always come out with fun packaging. I think once you collect a few of them You're probably good. You know, it's not like they are going to stop coming out with beautiful lipsticks They always have really pretty limited lipstick so I can wait and the last fall collection that I am leaving at least for now is the Fenty collection and it looks like there are only a couple products here. They look really pretty, very fall. Nothing really speaks to me. You have this really deep vampy lip. Here in Miami I will probably never wear it, rarely wear it. The one thing I'm maybe on the fence about is the colored mascaras. This green mascara and then it looks like a burgundy mascara which Chanel used to have a burgundy mascara. I don't think they have it anymore. And that looks really pretty. And there are so many burgundy, pink, purple eyeshadow palettes out right now. I feel like a burgundy mascara would pair really nice. So the burgundy mascara is a maybe. The green mascara is a maybe. Now this might end up being the most interesting makeup launch of 2020. By Rado Makeup. I would have never thought, in a world where everybody is coming out with makeup left and right, every brand, every celebrity, I would have never guessed Byredo makeup was even a thought in anybody's brain, but here we have it. It's coming. I picked this up on the Trend Mood Instagram page. I have no idea what the products will be, what it will look like. It's a very artistic looking photo, so that kind of tells me that they're not going to come out with a warm neutral earth tone palette, which when I think of Pyredo fragrance and I try to imagine what the makeup would be, 
it's such a minimalistic brand. I don't know, like their labels, the packaging, everything is so clean. I don't really think of wild creative editorial makeup and that is not what we are seeing here in this photo. So I have no idea what to even think about this launch. All I know is I'm excited, I'm interested. I like Byredo fragrance. What do you guys think? There are a couple scents from them that I love. I've never invested in a full bottle though because they do not last. And it kills me, but they do not last on me. I cannot justify that purchase. There's a Byredo dry shampoo right now at Sephora. I've had it in my shopping cart for a really long time. It's limited edition, so I feel like I might just go ahead and get it, but I'm kinda interested. But Byredo makeup, let's just hope, let's collectively hope that the makeup lasts longer than the fragrance because the fragrance, you get maybe two to three hours out of it, at least on me. Whatever they come out with, I'm gonna pick it up just to test it out. The curiosity will kill me. So I am going to pick up something from this collection as soon as it launches. The last little section of my list here is dedicated to celebrity makeup launches and there are a lot of them coming out really soon. And I would love to hear your feedback. What are your thoughts? Are you excited? Are you interested? Are you tired of celebrity launches or does that hook you and make you more excited? The first one here is Lauren Conrad Beauty and this is available right now. It's supposed to be vegan, cruelty free. Not a huge launch, a couple of pieces, you know, finely curated. They look really cute, they look nice, kind of clean, very minimal, her style. I grew up watching Laguna Beach and the Hills, so I'm a Lauren Conrad fan. I like what she does on her blog and Pinterest, Instagram page. But I don't know, I think it's a little bit boring, to be honest. I wish there was some other element. It looks really similar to some of the big influencer makeup brands that have launched, like Summer Fridays. There are a few others that are available now in Sephora. And I'm just talking about the packaging, not the products themselves. I need that wow factor. There is so much coming out right now. Don't you just want that wow? Like you wanna feel really good about spending your money. At this point, I feel like most people have a huge makeup collection. I hear from you guys all the time who tell me, you bought this, you bought that. I buy way more than I should simply to review and I'm, I love it. I'm excited to purchase and play around with new things. If it's not really incredible, why waste your money? Something really incredible is right around the corner. I'd be curious to see what the price is because I don't want to spend a lot of money on a white clear plastic tube of clear lip gloss. That just does not excite me whatsoever. The little, is that a cheek pot? I don't know. KKW Skin was announced recently, so that will be coming out sometime soon. I've never purchased or talked about any Kylie products, Kylie Beauty, Kylie Skin, or I guess it's Kylie Cosmetics, I don't even know the name. I've never purchased or talked about any KKW Beauty, so this is an easy skip for me. I just thought that was kind of interesting that she's also coming out with skin since there's Kylie Skin. JLo announced on Instagram, JLo Beauty coming soon. What do we make of this, guys? I mean, her makeup artist has his own line, Scott Barnes. Maybe they will collab on a couple pieces. I don't know. I know JLo has done several collabs with other brands to bring out products. I think I have a JLo nail polish <laughs> somewhere. It's a nude color, it's really pretty. I'm excited to see what she comes out with, but when I think of JLo, she's just such a glamorous woman. So is it going to be closer to drugstore? Is it going to be high-end? I'm just very curious. This piques my interest, just because I wanna know what she what's she gonna come out with. When I think of JLo makeup, I think of glowy skin, bronze skin, lashes, kind of a soft glam, smoky eye, nude lipstick. It could be all of those things. It could be none of those things. We will have to wait and see. And then September 3rd, Rare Beauty is launching in Sephora. I just signed up for the waitlist actually a little bit ago, just out of curiosity more than anything else. I don't intend to purchase, but who knows? Kind of like JLo, like everything else, I'm just really interested to see what it's going to look like because there is so much makeup already available. Are these celebrities going to bring us anything different or is it just their name on the same products that have always been available? Doesn't Drew Barrymore have her own makeup brand? I remember seeing her do collaborations with big beauty YouTubers 
probably a year or two ago, but I haven't heard anybody talk about it since. Maybe it's no longer around, I'm not sure. Catherine Zeta-Jones has her own makeup brand. I can't even keep track. I honestly think the only celebrity to launch a luxury beauty brand and do a really good job is Victoria Beckham. Victoria Beckham and Rihanna, even though Fenty, I feel like isn't really a celebrity brand. I don't know, I, I feel like it is just a makeup brand. If she had called it Rihanna Beauty, maybe I would feel differently about it, but Victoria Beckham, I think, did a great job launching her line, collaborating with other luxury brands. Her collaboration with Estee Lauder first was really smart because those pieces flew. They were so popular, and you kind of got a sense of what she wanted to create before she launched her own brand. That's a brand that, that I have not tried yet, and I hear from you guys who say you're interested, so... Let me know down below if you have Victoria Beckham Beauty, what would you recommend? I'm going to place an order soon. I would like to tr test it out. And that's all I have to discuss for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.